automation allows variation to elements in our project to make a less static mix so that effects that we have applied are not necessarily the same throughout. Um, effect applied to a sound continuously can work in some instances, but in others it can devalue the use of that effect. So if I have a look at my arrangement that we've looked at previously with some audio that I have just developed a little bit further. So you can see that I've got bus 2 sending sound to my reverb and then I've got bus 3 which to a stereo delay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to automate some of the parameters in this project so that different elements change by themselves. So the first thing we need to do is look at the state. So on the mixer is the last box and this will be for pretty much every single channel. So we have three main states. So read. This reads any of the information that you have recorded and plays it back. Latch. This records the changes that you make on a track and record that line onto the automation lane. When you let go of your parameter, it will remain in the Touch is exactly the same as latch, but when you let go of the parameter, it will go back to where it started from. So we'll use latch first. So we'll come to the channel that we're going to work with and I'll put it into latch. I then press play and I'll move the dial. Click on latch, put it into read. It's green, so we can see that there is automation here that will be read. If I press X, get rid of the mixer, press A. It's this channel. A opens the automation. So if I select my channel, I open down the little arrow, it shows us what we've recorded automation on. So if I zoom in on this, every little point is a node. And this is essentially the calculation that the computer makes of the parameter to the next position. So we can straighten this out. We can just grab one of the nodes, redraw the lines. So I quite like to do this because it means that there are less calculations being made by the computer. It should be less processor intensive. If you have a lot of information in the automation lines in your track, this could potentially push your computer over the edge. So let's say I want to delete that. Delete visible automation on selected track. So just get rid of that automation line of the send. Gone. Now alternatively, if you know the parameter that you want, you can click into the menu and you can select which one so the volume fader the pan the solo and the mute which are probably not so useful but you can still automate these there's the send level that we just did bypass and you can mute so on this channel i am going to automate the low EQ so that it does something like this just to show you that it will continually move so I'll hide that I'm going to come to EQ so up frequency there it is so this time I'm going to draw it so I'm just going to put a point wherever I want 
and we'll do this. So I've added in my automation here. I actually want to copy it so that it happens in the second part. So I'm just going to use my marquee and highlight around and just use the same tool as what we would use for copying a region. Alt and drag to new position. Okay. So now let's come back to this channel. I'm going to change this so that we can see send. This time I'm going to put it into touch. So for each of these parts, I'm going to push the send up and then I'm going to let go and you'll see how it behaves. to read we can always come in and tidy these up so as an example curve this I'm gonna go to my curve tool bend the automation line just so that it's a little more kind of organic feeling So you can automate any parameter within Logic. You can anything that you can touch and move either with the, with the mouse or a you can automate it. So this is imagine lots and lots of other engineers working with you, changing how sounds unfold over time, changing the EQ, any parameter. This is what projects and pieces of music that you listen to sound interesting and detailed. <laughs> 